Yes, sir. Thank you. I heard a question because you said that uh, it served both of you, you know, this experience. Mm -hmm. Like you were heartbroken. Uh, uh, you said that it served for both of you. Mm -hmm. So I guess you were still in contact with her or something? Or yeah, so you're saying that by the fact that she had her kids? I'm still in contact with her. I'm in contact with, um, with all the people I've had relationships with that that want to be in contact with me. Um, because it was, it was a time when I, I wasn't, um, but then I was sort of invalidating that and it didn't feel very good. So I did have to explore reasons to forgive myself and other people. But yeah, I saw her this year. You know, she has two kids, she lives in Sweden. Uh, that's where she's from. Uh, she went to school in the States. And, and yeah, we, we write now and then. So, I know how the growth served me. I don't know how it served her, but I know it did in whatever way. But yeah, it's nice because we're always connected and we'll always be connected with, with each other. It's like we're all connected, all one thing. Yeah. Is that all you want to know about that situation? Sure. <laughs> we're not expecting any answers. <laughs> That's good. No, no insistence. <laughs> Any other questions about this or my personal stories? Or if someone also wants to share something, now would also be the time as, as well. Is there anything here that you found particularly helpful or useful to you? Was there any concepts that you've heard of before but maybe have more clarity now? Did you not? Did you? Is this what you did not prefer? <laughs> did I solidify the understanding that this will not work for you, and now you have other options? Yes. Yeah, for me, I just thank you. I like it very much, a lot. And in the last time, uh, yeah, I also experienced kind of this realization or. Yeah, I also, it's just a big confirmation of what I was thinking about and how I was, uh, yeah, living my life. Yeah, really right. cool. um, and I also had, like, an experience like that last <laughs> <Yeah>. year. <laughs> yeah. um, nice, well, I'm glad I couldn't reflect that back to you or give any sort of confirmation. This is just one way to go about things. It's what works for me. And I'm glad there are so many people that I know and don't know that that come here that are also interested. Because before I, had, I thought maybe no one else was. Uh, but, you know, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> For me. Anyone else want to say something before I give my wrap up speech? Some questions? Yeah. No? Yeah. So, yeah, I was interested in the topic when you say that choose like what to do based on your feeling, yeah, but that's sometimes what I find uh, more challenging when I have a rational mind and for some actions that it, uh, it evaluates, like this is right, this is bad, or this is good, and then it's really difficult to find out what I really want, or is, is it a lie, like, uh, good option for me. So we you have this kind of experiences or Yeah, but I yes, but I but I noticed if I if I took a moment to choose the state I preferred, it would be a lot clearer. And and with whatever state I was, if I listed out the options that I could act on and picked the one that was oh, and, and, pick, and, and, and picked the one that was most pulling me the most resonant act on that um, and everything will be fine and even if that's not the thing it'll it'll turn you the feeling will turn you around and direct you to something else it's kind of like when you decide you need two choices and you're like and someone says well, let's go with A and you're like ah I kind of don't want to go with A I want to go with B but I didn't know that until you said A kind of like that that's, that's how it can happen as well, but you get used to acting more discernment, just feeling out 
what feels resonant. And if thoughts come up on, you know, I don't have time for this or whatnot, then that's part of the process to look at those, those thoughts. Thank you. And the other question I have about if you have like, an experience to find out, like, in a fears, which is not like directly fear, but you can realize that this mm -hmm. is a fear, but it's some other thoughts that you never think that there is a fear behind it. And you have this kind of behavior actually because of fear there. I can bring the one example because it's like the one what I found out about shyness. So, so shyness, yeah. Yeah, and I never thought before that it's just a fear. There is another explanation, so you don't know to be in the center of uh, uh, attention or whatever else, but uh, I mean, it's your natural right way. But I never thought that there is a fear behind it. And maybe there are some other cases to discover here to, yeah. to see. I mean, if only my parents, you know, when I was younger, they're like, oh, he's just shy. They didn't realize, yeah. oh, this kid's terrified of something. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but because many people they don't uh, think about it as a fear that there is a... Um, no. Well, you just ask yourself, why don't I do this? Why do I feel shy? And then you say, I'm scared of this or that. And then you keep asking questions for what I have to believe to be true about myself um, in order to feel this, this fear. And, but you're right, you do you, you examine it, break it down, it's, it's less scary. It's really... Doing all these things, I found there's there's nothing I've ever encountered that I needed to be afraid of. The most I was afraid of was experiencing a reflection of my own fear. And any other fear I felt was a self-imposed limitation where I thought I didn't have options, but I just didn't act on them. Mm -hmm. 